long without it. Now, the 18th Asian Games are underway in Indonesia, where tens of thousands of people are attending events in Jakarta and Palembang. Now, the Southeast Asian country is estimated to have spent over $2 billion building up infrastructure for the event. Indonesia stepped up to the plate after Vietnam won the bid, but withdrew from hosting duties because the Games became too expensive. So, how much does it cost to stage an event like this? Well, here's what we can tell you. For Rio de Janeiro, the 2018 Summer Olympics, well, that cost the country more than $13 billion uh, for Brazil. That's a far cry from the original estimates of $4.6 billion. Now, Russia's cost of hosting the FIFA World Cup this summer reportedly exceeded $14 billion. So is the investment a winning strategy for countries like Indonesia. Well, let's bring in uh, Sasi Kumar. He's the founder and chief executive of Red Card Global. That's a sports uh, marketing agency. Welcome to the program, uh, Sasi Kumar. So let's take a look at um, Indonesia. I mean, is it a clever idea hosting something like this when you've got countries like Vietnam balking at the cost and pulling out? Well, I thought it was a, it was a great deal for Indonesia because obviously, as we know, that uh, Vietnam bid for it and actually got it then balked at the figure of putting so much money into infrastructure and hosting the games, and then Indonesia stepped up. So in a, in a broader sp spectrum, I would believe, I mean, I believe personally that uh, Indonesia needs this because it's a huge PR exercise for any country trying to host such major games, as we've seen with Russia. Mm -hmm. um, not too long ago, I was there in Russia and had this preconceived notion about Russia until I got there. And now, even over lunch yesterday, I was telling a friend of mine that he must go to Russia. So mm -hmm. you can see the intangible benefits a country gets okay. out so, of hosting such so, major So events. are the intangible benefits, uh, you know, justifiable? I mean, these are countries spending billions of dollars to host these things. They are. I think when you look at that from, from that perspective, whether they can break even, uh, when it comes to the numbers, it absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out or a financial analyst. But, but then again, you look at what's happening in Indonesia, in Palembang. Um, the local municipal uh, council has dished out over thousands of small micro loans to small businesses, mm. helping them cope with uh, the influx of visitors in their country. Right. All of a sudden, they can now um, step up uh, their operations. So the recreation and hospitality industry really benefits right. from hosting such major events. Yeah, so when I think of Jakarta, I think of terrible <laughs> traffic. I mean, this is a city that desperately needs infrastructure, should they be spending the infrastructure on, on perhaps stadiums that may only be used a handful of times? I don't think so. They have built purpose-built stadiums. Uh, the money has not really gone into really building more stadiums. They have enough stadiums across, uh, especially in Jakarta. You are right there when you talk about the traffic. I think it's uh, the number one thing that comes to anyone's mind when you talk about Jakarta. But uh, there are some um, road infrastructure that's being built. Um, though I haven't been there in the last six months, I used to go there almost every week. And you can see a lot of uh, constructions going on there. But at the end of the day, I think, like I mentioned, I think the core reason why they're hosting is, is it, it is now creating that um, interest and also mm -hmm. the confidence, investor confidence in, in Indonesia and Jakarta. All right. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for coming in Thank and talking you. to us. Thank you, Kumar, there.